All right, so I just wanted to do a little video here showcasing my Genesis slash Mega Drive shooters. Um, and we'll go in alphabetical order. So this first one here is Advanced Buster Hawk Glay Lancer. Um, and it was kind of an unknown game for a while. Um, I believe the first time I ever saw it uh, was a Game Sack video on Genesis shooters. And uh, I tried it out on uh, the EverDrive and it was fan This is one of my favorite shooters. This, this game is so, it's just so fun to play, uh, not overly difficult. You do get a lot of options and choices for your options in terms of how they move and how they shoot. And, um, you know, the text is not in English, but you can get a patch uh, if you wanted to actually see the story. And I don't think the story is all that important for shooters, but uh, uh, that's my first game. Afterburner 2. Um, ironically, there's an F-15 on the cover when the game focuses on F-14s, but uh, who would know that, right? Unless you grew up watching Top Gun. So this is your classic arcade port. Um, pretty good port on the Genesis, although not perfect. Uh, they would later attempt again with the 32X and then with the uh, Saturn ports, and they each got successively better. But uh, still a lot of fun, especially for the day when it came out. I mean, it it, uh, it was amazing that it even came out at all for a home console at the time. Airbuster. Uh, this is a, a high-action horizontal shooter. There's a lot going on the screen at once, especially when you get your power-ups. There's like these little barrels you shoot, and the power-ups explode and fly all over the place. And you kind of... There's so many, you have to pick what you want, and there's no way you can pick them all up because they kind of fly apart quickly. Um, I don't have the glove. But uh, for some reason, this game, you always find this game with a faded spine. In mine, my case is, or my cover art is a little faded. It's not too bad, but you can kind of tell where there was a sticker that was blocking the sunlight. So the print quality was, you know, I don't know if there was something going on with the color of yellow or what. But uh, this is a good game. Uh, it's also released for the PC Engine. Um, so some people like that version better, you know. Um, I think I think I think it's it's good overall. I don't really ha really have a preference over one or the other. Air Diver. So Air Diver is one of those uh, in the cockpit shooters. Um, so much so, I mentioned this in my other video. You know, the cockpit takes up so much of the real estate on the screen that the action only occurs in like this little bit here. You know, so I don't know. It's for me, it feels like a waste, but I, you know, you get why they're doing that. They were trying to cut down on the amount of memory that it was using, and, you know, by having fewer things moving, you could make them, I don't know, faster? I'm not quite sure, but, uh, uh you know, it's okay. Uh, Arrow Flash. This is a game that was brought over by Renovation because Sega decided that they, uh, the game wasn't worth publishing themselves. This is a great game. Um, a lot of people call it a too simple of a shmup. Um, you have a ship that can transform on the fly to a, a mech, and your fire pattern is different, and um, the little options you have, they lock into place when you're in mech form, but you know they kind of trail you when you're in ship form. And if you collect enough A icons, you can uh, your power-up is like the arrow flash, where if you hit that, you're like a, this invincible flash this bolt of um energy that flies around the screen doing massive damage to bosses so uh not really talked about you know um but uh this is definitely one of my one of my favorites grab the next set here atomic robo kid um yeah it's a shmup but your your character he flies but he's he almost looks like it should be a run and gun or at least a platformer based on his shape. Um, not ter terribly fond. I like a lot about this game, except I don't like the actual main character's sprite. Um, I think he looks like a little garbage can running around, and for some reason that's a turn off. I don't know. Maybe maybe it shouldn't bother me, but but it does. Uh, Battle Mania Two or Battle Mania Daijin Joe. Right, this was obviously a Mega Drive release only. Uh, a sequel to Troubleshooter. And uh, you play uh, as 
um, one protagonist who controls two, your movement controls two protagonists, and the second player can be rotated front or front facing or back facing, and depending on whether you have like a lot of enemies coming from behind, right? Um, you can choose your weapon loadout at the beginning of each stage, um, and you have a depending on which uh, type of backpack you pick up, you have a different type of screen clearing option when your gauge is full. So super fun game. Uh, lots going on. There's not, there must not be a lot of these because this game is pretty pricey. Battle Squadron. This is an EA release. Um, this is actually a. I don't have the cardboard case for it, so it's not. That's why it's in the clamshell. Uh, it's a reprint cover. Uh, this game, you know, it had potential. Uh, I just think that the. The the. I don't. I don't know if the design is all that great. Um, the game design, the gameplay. Your shooting is very weak relative to even the first stage enemies, and that's a turnoff immediately. It's like you shouldn't have to struggle to destroy popcorn enemies, and it just kind of gets worse from there. So if they had, if they tweaked this, if they went through a little bit more playtesting and balanced that a little bit, I guess, you you know, the game would have been better. But as it is, it's kind of a, a meh shooter. It is, it is two players simultaneously, but, you know, it's, two players experiencing the same pain. I don't know if that's any better. Big Mini Run. Um, this is an oddball game. I, I, it's like you're, you're shooting while you're piloting a boat. So, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's unique. It, it's something different that you could play if you just, if you're tired of the same old traditional shmups. Um, but uh, I don't. I don't really think it's fun personally. But I, I can kind of see how like people would like it um, as a change of pace game. Biohazard Battle. Uh, this game is a lot of fun. And there's a lot of. Uh, it's very unique. The music, the soundtrack is is fantastic. It's very um, primal sounding, and uh, you have four. They're like live ships, so they're not spaceships. They're more like animals almost, and each one has its own different shot characteristics. And uh, it's you can play two player co op on this. It's really refreshing. Um, very underrated game. This is Bioship Paladin um, for the Mega Drive, and this is an oddball game. It's it's okay. Your ship is really chunky and large. Um, it handles okay, you know, funnily enough, but it's just kind of, I don't know. I just, you know, the sprite design is a little bit of a turnoff, but uh, you have some interesting environments, some interesting backgrounds, you know. Um, it's not my favorite. It's not great. It's not bad, though. Burning Force. Uh, this is the flying, the pseudo 3D flying into the screen type game, um, similar to that of Space Harrier. And uh, your ship, you know, flies around the ground and you can gather the different, you know, power ups. Um, you've got, of course, a, a floor zooming by on the bottom to let you know that you're going into the screen, hence 3D. So, you know, it's, uh, I think this is a Wolf Team game. It's, um, other people like it a lot. I think it's good. You know, I don't, I'm not crazy about it, but it's fun. So Crossfire uh, is a... I think they call it Crossfire because you're, half the game is spent like running on foot, but half is spent as a shooter, helicopter shooter in the air. Um, I think this game was originally called... Uh, supposed to be an Airwolf game. Um, I don't know why they changed the name. But uh, maybe they couldn't get the license for the U.S. home release. Um, it's it doesn't do either all that great, right? So you get two genres of gameplay, um, neither of which you know stands up. So yeah, it's you know for completionists. This game makes the the cover art alone makes you want to love this game. Um, that's just some some really really sick cover art. Um, the problem is the game feels like it plays like it's, you know, 10 frames per second. Uh, it literally looks like it's stuttering across the screen as you move. Um, and, you know, 
I just can't get past that. You know, and there's not whatever else is going on in the game. It's it's too distracting to have it the 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 frame rate so low. So they didn't really optimize this very well. This is Dai Zen Pu, um, and I think this is also called Twin Hawk. Um, it was Twin Hawk as a uh, European Appal release. It was not released in the States. So this is an early total plan game, and you're you're you don't have you're a World War II era fighter, and all of your enemies are land targets, so like tanks and turrets and stuff like that. There's no planes, oddly enough, um, which you know is interesting. You know, there's not too many games that do that. Um, you have a power like a kind of a your power up is a formation attack where you have all these planes, like a whole squadron, align with you and fly and shoot forward. And as you move left, they move left. And so the thing is, if they get hit, they're they're done. They kind of spiral towards the ground and they kamikaze towards a ground target. Um, so there's kind of an art to calling them up. And you can control the space on the screen, but you also got to move them out of the way if you see projectiles coming towards any one of them, which is kind of a, you know, a, a, its own sub game almost. Um, the music's a little repetitive, you know, but it's a, it's a fun, simple early shooter. Dangerous Seed, um, of course, an arcade port. This is was only released in Japan. It's a Mega Drive game. Um, so this is an interesting game because you can alter your your firing types um, based on the power ups that you pick up. And there's some interesting looking bosses. You know, it's it's it plays pretty well. You know, um, this is I you know I'm not sure why they didn't release this. I guess. You know, there were so many shooters on the Genesis at the time that kind of felt like there were way too many of them. So they probably took a pass on it. But uh, I could see this have been a, de a decently popular game for the Genesis. So Darius was not commercially released as a physical game for the Genesis, um, at least not until the Genesis Mini came out. And then this company, Columbia Columbus Circle, decided to release it a uh, physical cart for it. Um, you had to get it through, you know, you had to import it because it wasn't released here. So it's called Darius Extra Virgin version. Whoops. And, um, you know, I was so hopeful for this game. I was so excited for this game because you can just tweak the options. And the, the one, you know, the version on the Genesis Mini was a little too difficult. So the extra version adds more gameplay modes. My problem with this game is they totally cheaped out on the PCB and they went with one of these generic, like super cheap square edged PCBs. And these ones, if, you know, if they're not beveled, they'll totally wreck your Genesis and the pins. Um, a lot of people say that it, it plays fine, but uh, the thing you have to realize is every time you use one of these cheap PCBs, the pins in your Genesis that get widened you know, and eventually they won't clamp down on a thinner real carts pins. Like if we look at, right, I don't know. if you look at two of these combined, they don't look that different. But the, the main difference is that real cart PCBs are beveled, right? They're narrower at the tip. So they're not expanding out the pins as much. So that's, it was disappointing to see that. Um, I'm debating selling this version because I don't see myself ever wanting to put this in my, my actual Genesis. So, but it's a sleek presentation. Just too bad they cheaped out on the production. So here's Darius 2. Mega Drive game, of course. This was released in the U.S. It's known as Sajaya. For some reason, they decided to change their name to something that's totally, you know, seemingly unrelated. Um, this is, uh, I think this is one of the best 16-bit versions of Darius. Um, I know there's a bunch on released on the SNES as well, but uh, this one is a lot of fun. It's balanced well, I think. So it's not like ridiculously difficult like some of the PC Engine versions are. So it's more fun to play. Darwin 4081, Mega Drive release again. You're... Uh, an evolving ship and you pick up these pieces of dna from fall 
uh, fallen enemies and then your ship morphs and changes and your characteristics change and your shot type changes and uh, I can't really because it changes so often and there's all these DNA pickups I can't really keep track of which form I'd like so um, it's an oddball game you know it's done it's not great but uh, it's worth a play right So this is Divine Ceiling, and this is a repro cover because the game the game itself came in this weird, like, cardboard box that is kind of differently shaped. Um, the game is genuine, but, uh, you know, this, this is notorious for being, um, it's got nude scenes in between stages, right? So it's called one of those hentai shooters. Um... Yeah, it's it's not great. It's not as bad. The gameplay is not as bad as people say it is. There are some really really harsh graphical backgrounds here, like this first stage, the the uh, water stage is this high contrast and it's uh, it's, it's rippling and it's moving really fast and it's just kind of hard to watch. So um, graphically, you know, they could have made better choices. The Earth Defense. This is another uh, non-licensed shooter. All right, it comes it comes in a really oddly narrow cartridge. It's like as narrow as an EA cartridge, but not as tall. So it's really a, a small cartridge, um, and it's a pretty crappy game. Um, it's it, it's not sure what it wants to be called. It's called the Earth Defend, and it's called Earth Defense. Well, make up your mind, you know. I guess if it doesn't know what it, what it wants to be called, then you don't need to know it. Elemental Master. So this is a fantastic uh, shooter. It's It borders on um, run-and-gun territory because your avatar is a human and he's on the ground, so technically he's running. So I guess you could say it's a run-and-gun shooter, but it plays more like a, you know, a vertical shooter, right? you got different weapon pickups. Um, uh, and you can shoot forward or backwards as you move, right? Depending which button you're pressing. So um, pretty much you can kind of handle any kind of enemy coming towards you at any given time. So this is made by Technosoft, the same folks who made uh, Thunder Force series. So, and you can tell too, because when you start hearing some of those sound effects, especially those, those collision sound effects, you know that this is a Technosoft game. This is the, uh, the big one. This is Eliminate Down, Mega Drive release only. And this game, you know, there's... By the time anybody heard about this game, I feel like it was already prohibitively expensive. So, on my quest to complete the the subset of Genesis shooters, um, you know, I just didn't have the kind of cash to fork out over this. So, what I did was I took my entire GameCube collection, and GameCube collection games here... At the time, were cheap. You know, I was getting them at like between three and five bucks at Goodwill, and I had amassed a whole bunch of them. And then COVID happened, and there's this giant, giant uptick in in the value of GameCube games. And so I just uh, put them up on eBay, and I sold sold them nearly all. I kept a couple of them that are that are that I like a lot, but I sold most of them, and that was enough to pay for this. So you can you can do your own math to figure out how many GameCube games I uh, sold off to get this. But uh, no regrets, because GameCube is, you know, it's an okay console for me, but this is, my heart here lies with Genesis and shooters. And the gameplay, you know, this, if you want to talk about a system pusher, you know, as far as how much is going on the screen at once, this game is, does not play like a 16-bit shooter. This plays like a 32-bit shooter. There's just, the action is just crazy. Like, you can't believe some of the stuff, the effects it's pulling off, and how much it's able to handle. Um, blast processing in full effect here on this. Next up is Final Zone. Uh, again, you know, I know this is on a lot of people's shooter lists, but uh, it's also kind of a running gun, too. Because, um, again, you're ground-based. It's kind of an isometric perspective. And it's another Wolf Team game. So it's fun, you know. It's, uh, you know, the, I, I kind of think the, the, the controls and the, the change of direction could be a little better. Right, but it's not enough to, to make you not like the game, you know. So it's a it's a solid game. 
Fire Mustang is a horizontal World War II, of course, or maybe later than World War II. Um, I don't know why. I like this game a lot. I like it more than most people do. Um, there's nothing flashy about this at all. The bullets are are kind of almost like realistic, like the bombs that you drop and the missiles you fire are almost realistic. So they're not they're not overly colorful and they're not really, you know, they don't. There's not a lot of attention called to them, um, almost like Battle Garega in that sense. But you know, I I, I just kind of like the simplicity and you know how how it, how you do is based purely on your control of your craft, and um, you can power up your 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 bombs that you drop you can power up your you can have angled shots you know um so depending on the scenario the power up you pick up will determine how easy that that level is so it's an it's just kind of a, an under the radar game i think more people you know people who like shooters with no frills would probably like this game fire shark is a lot of fun um mainly because you can get seriously overpowered in this game and you can shoot your your spread gun, your um, kind of like green wavy laser, or your fire, your giant fire swaths. And once you get fully powered up, which by the way does not happen very quickly, you've got to collect a lot of icons to get fully powered up. I think you get fire, your power uh, level goes up one for every four power icons you pick up. So it's it's not kind of like Truxton, you know, it's not instant, right? But um, the longer you stay alive to accumulate your firepower, you know, the more you're rewarded by having this, like, crazy, crazy insurmountable firepower. And that makes it a lot of fun. It's also a Toll Plan game. This is one of the ones that was released when Toll Plan re-released that uh, collection through Retrobit. Um, so I didn't really have a need to get those, obviously, because I have them. But for people, it was nice that people were able to get them. Forgotten Worlds. So arcade port, two-player... This game is originally supposed to have like a rotating uh, joystick because you're supposed to be able to turn your, your aim 360 degrees. Uh, instead, the A and C button rotate your your uh, the angle of your player around to shoot in different directions. So you have a, a fair amount of control once you get used to it. Um, some great graphics, right? Especially for an early Genesis game. Um, you know, you collect money from downed enemies. You can spend them at the shop, upgrade your weapons, your, your lives and stuff, stuff like that. So, so G Lock, uh, G Lock was, I believe, developed. It, the intention was for this to be a sequel to Afterburner, um, and so you can kind of tell from the game, from the arcade HUD, and you know the gameplay that that's very similar to Afterburner, um, and that's because, you know, I think it was supposed to be Afterburner three, but for some reason they didn't. Maybe they thought that it didn't live up to Afterburner standards, and so they didn't call it that. Um, it's a fun game. I mean, it, it, it's not a stretch to say it plays just like an Afterburner game. It's very similar, you know. So Sega had this really, really bad habit of not continuing on with their IPs, right? And so if they called this Afterburner 3, I'm sure it would have sold way more. But, you know, who knows? Sega, just their their logic sometimes was a mystery to most people. Uh, this is not, in my opinion, this is not really a shooter, but I keep seeing this on everybody's list of shooters. You know, I, you fly around and you punch things, so punching is not shooting, so it, you know, is it, you know, a fun game? It's okay, it's kind of crafty, you know, um, you have to keep in mind because you, in order to attack things, you gotta get, get up close to them, so, I don't know, I'm not crazy about it. Guy RS, right? If you know how to um, pronounce it from the t-shirt, then if you've seen those ads, you know exactly what this is. Uh, this is one of the top five shooters, maybe, on the Genesis. Just the amount of memory and the amount of graphical detail and the stages and the bosses, the unique gameplay with being able to cap throw your satellite out and it attaches to enemies and it copies their, their weapons. And then you can keep doing this. If you do it a couple times in a row, you can power up even more and more. Uh, music is awesome. There's a story. Um, a lot of cutscenes. Some people say they don't like the the cover art to this. Uh, they're, the Japanese cover art, you know, is good too. I don't see anything wrong with it. I mean, maybe it's a little too cartoony. 
but uh, it's it's a great game. It's when this came out, this was super expensive for a Genesis game. It was like I want to say it was at the time it was like seventy dollars, which you know, at a time when most games were coming out were fifty dollars. You know, must have been all that extra meg power that it has, extra chip. So Galaxy Force Two, the arcade port. Um, another fly into the screen, you know, um, space Harrier type game. I'm not crazy about games where your, your energy constantly runs down. Um, and that, that's happening here. And yeah, while there are power-ups and things you pick up, it's just, it's always irksome to me when they do that. Um, I'd almost rather it be like a one hit death than having to like keep track of, you know, your energy watching that, that meter go down and down and down. So, Granada, um, I keep wanting to call this Granada X, but that's not really an X. That's more so like the weird border around the title. This is another renovation game, um, and it was developed by Wolf Team. So, you're a ground based tank and you're pretty nimble. Um, it reminds me of Metal Stoker on the PC Engine. Uh, where you can kind of lock your direction and fire and you've got to roam around and destroy all the certain kinds of bases and targets and then you get to face a boss afterwards so a lot of fun um not you know uh just like overall good game i don't know what more to say about it grindstormer um i think this is known as v5 um, in Japan, so it's a toe plan game, and the aspect ratio, you know, it's, is a little bit of a problem to me on this game, um, because it's an arcade port, but if you just, you know, if you zoom in, you know, it doesn't really, I don't think it's really gel jives with, with the way the enemies behave, because, you know, They'll shoot at you, but the bullets will reach you faster if you're, they're zoomed in. You know, and plus everything looks bigger when it's zoomed in and they're kind of chonky. Um, the thing about this game is that a lot of these games, there's some, something faulty with the way these games are constructed. So a lot of them uh, die. And so when you buy these games, you've got to verify and make sure that the cartridge actually works. Because sometimes they just, due to age and due to the way they were designed, they don't work anymore. Uh, which is kind of strange. It happens to many of these so you've got to inquire. Heavy units, another uh, Mega Drive shooter. That's a, that's a cool cover. The cover is the best part about this game. Uh, it's, I think it's kind of, I don't know if unfair is the right word, but um, I don't know. Something about it just does not make it enjoyable to play. Um, like, you get through two stages, and you get kind of tired of it's the tricks that it throws at you. I don't, I, I can't really describe it. It's not great. It's not horrible, but I never really thought it was any fun. Hellfire. Uh, one of two of Toa Plan's horizontal shooters. This game uh, is really cool because you've got... Your four different methods of firing. You've got your forward, you've got your up down, you've got your diagonals. And depending on where the enemies are, and you know, one type of firing is going to be better than another. Uh, especially with boss battles, it becomes very, very apparent. So um, it's, it's you're always you're constantly thinking, you're constantly on your toes, like cycling through the powers. And uh, each each one of those can be powered up as well. So a lot of fun. Great game. Erzog Zwei is not technically a shooter. It's more of a strategy game. Um, but it's an action strategy game where you fly around and you have to, you have all these commands. You have to, the goal is to take over your enemy bases. And so you've got, to, you can go and transport ground troops. You can uh, bring tanks. Your, your mech itself can fire, engage in battle, but then like fly away. Um, it's, hard to wrap your brain around it um because it's not as intuitive you know especially oh my god if you don't have the directions then kind of you better look it up because you can't just pick up and play without any without guidance but 
for people who really got into the hang of this, they really, really love it. Um, I'm not quite there yet. I'm really terrible at it. Um, but to be fair, I haven't put as much time in it as maybe I'd like to. And Sector X. So you're, um, this is a little different than the arcade. So it's a port, but, um, in the arcade, I believe you're a, a bug. I believe you're like a bee-like character, whereas here you're a humanoid-like character. Um, but it's still fun. The bug designs are cool to look at. Um, gameplay mechanic-wise, it's not it's not really inventive, but it's okay. It's simple and it's fun for an early game. Master of Weapon is uh, your average, you know. Game, Japanese vertical shooter. This is a Mega Drive game. Um, I don't know. Just there were so many out, and this one doesn't stand out. The game it plays okay, I guess. Mega Swiv um, for the SNES was released. It was called Firepower Two Thousand. Uh, this game. So this was a PAL release hence all the languages. I find this game annoying because I feel like your hitbox is unfairly large for some reason. I just feel like I'm blown up at every turn. Um, I don't know if the controls, if the controls contribute to that or not. Um, I guess in my head, every time I play this game, I keep thinking I'd rather be playing Firepower 2000. I feel like that game was more uh, fine-tuned, um, whereas this one feels incomplete, or not incomplete, but rushed. Maybe it wasn't play-tested well. Here is another one of the heavies, Musha. It's an acronym. Um, the Japanese version is called Musha Aleste, right? Where there's an actual mythology behind the name, whereas here they just, to Americanize it, they gave it an acronym, Metallic Uniframe Super Hybrid Armor. I mean, whatever. That name doesn't even matter because there's some really cool story sequences and cutscenes, and just this is one of the best... You know, it oscillates from being my first or second favorite shooter on the Genesis. Um, just the graphical detail, the music. The music is outstanding on this game. Uh, you have your power-ups, your, your ability to change the direction of your op options and where they shoot. Um, you know, and of course, you know, being a compile game, your little P-chips that you collect to increase your the fire, fire, firepower. It's just so much. Everything everybody says about this game is all true. This game is just fantastic. Um... I would say everybody should run out and get it, but that's kind of prohibited by now. So find a way to play it. Get yourself an EverDrive or even buy yourself a repro of this, right? And and play it because it's just so much fun. It's, you know, if I only had what five games for the Genesis, this would uh, obviously be one of them. So Omega Blast, this is an unofficial release. This is this was a uh, homebrew. Um, it's like a top score game. Like kind of like a caravan style game where you've got to survive and, and see what kind of score you can get in two minutes. It's bullet hell on the Genesis if there ever was one. Now, granted, this was a newer newer game. So, you know, after the, the Genesis has been uh, fully, fully um, understood and developed for, uh, that's how they're able to squeeze out every little bit of processing power out of it. Super hard, but super fun. Like, it's a fun game to challenge others and see what kind of score you can get. Panorama Cotton, right? A Mega Drive game. Pretty rare, so kind of expensive. Also, you know, a flying into the screen type game. Um, you know, I, I kind of... The problem with these games is the bigger the sprite is, the harder it is to see what's going on in front of you. So sometimes you're flying, her big old head is like in the way and you can't quite see. It's not as bad as the as the Dreamcast version of Con. That one was just like crazy. But, uh, you know, it's it's fun. Um, I don't think it's worth what people are asking for it now. But, uh, you know, if you people really, really love Cotton, I guess you should check it out. I kind of prefer the horizontal Cotton games myself. Phileos, the... Uh, Greek mythology inspired vertical shooter, right? Go and rescue um, Artemis 
and the bosses are cool. You know, you got your 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 avatar is Apollo. Whoops. So he's uh, he's flying on his little horse, and you got his sword, which you can hold down button and charge up. So it's different. You know, it's a it's a nice change of pace game. Raiden, Trad, the arcade port. In my opinion, the Genesis version is the best arcade port. Um, it a lot of the Raiden games get the the ratio aspect ratio wrong, and or, or at least if they you know if they zoom in, they don't uh, correct the gameplay for it. I feel like Raiden has been corrected, and uh, it's it's been optimized for the screen real estate that it's taking up. So, you know, if you know if you like Raiden, you know what to expect. Uh, this game was actually released initially in this crazy, you know, early '90s neon color palette. And then later on, they're like, "Oh, well, we, that let's let's change the color to make it more appealing, I guess." And so they released a more serious, just straight up red. You know, this cover, like aesthetically pleasing, I think looks better. But this color, you know, historically accurate is mo is more um, period accurate, right? So this one, this one is the one you see. This one is this one's kind of rare. I don't think they made too many of these. Ranger X. So this is a fantastic uh, horizontal sh mech shooter where you you fly, but you also have this kind of motorbike that follows you along the ground that you can combine with, and but you could also leave it, and it offers support fire. And uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do on here. So this requires, I think it requires the six button controller. I can't imagine playing it on a three three button controller. Um, there's just so much going on in the background and the detail of movements, you know, it's a later game and you can tell they kind of, they knew what they were doing, how to program the Genesis. So definitely, definitely worth picking up. Uh, Red Zone. So this is also one of those hybrid games where you, you're flying. It's a shooter, helicopter shooter. The helicopter controls like, uh, like a shopping cart at Walmart, I think. It's kind of wobbly and, and slippery. Um, when you get off on foot, you know, there's some cool 3D effects because you're like on a lower plane and so you'll be walking by and you'll see like light fixtures and wall, wall pillars, you know, move as if in 3D. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's animations here. The, oh, the opening animation is really, really impressive, right? This is often cited as a game that's pushing the Genesis and its capabilities. Um, but the gameplay is just, I feel like there's hit detection problems, right? Aside from the slippery controller, helicopter controller. So it's just okay. Here's Sagaya, which I mentioned earlier is Darius 2, right? So not much more to say about that. It's, it's a great game. Here is Slap Fight. Uh, Slap Fight is a toll plan arcade port. Um, it's an early game, so the gameplay may seem very primitive. There is a uh, power-up system where you collect stars, and that moves the, the meter in terms of what kind of power-up you can collect. Um, and you actually have to uh, select the right power-up for the right stage that you're on if you want to have the greatest chance for success. So uh, a lot of experimentation is needed to figure out the right way to do that. This does have an arranged mode uh, that has music composed by Yuzo Koshiro, you know, of um, Streets of Rage fame. So that's pretty cool. That sounds a lot better. Soul Dees is, um, I think this, I'm not sure if this is a Wolf Team game or not, but Renovation brought it over. It seems like they were bringing over tons of Wolf Team stuff. Uh, this shooter um, is the cartridge form. There's also a Sega CD version called Soul Feast with, you know, uh, live streaming Redbook audio from the CD. Whereas, you know, I like the chiptunes better. So um, I, I kind of prefer this version of it. So, you know, it's, you've got these gun mounts that can pivot and focus far forward, or you can spread them out and shoot wider. And so depending on the stage, depending on your enemy distribution, you know, you kind of keep tabs on that. So it's a fun game. 
Space Harrier 2, right? So this was an early, early game on the Genesis. I can't remember if it was a launch title or not. I think it might have been. Um, it plays, you know, the mechanics of the game, and it plays just like the original Space Harrier did in the arcade, except it's not the original Space Harrier. To call it a sequel, I guess they changed the, the enemies and the bosses, and, you know, I, I don't think it was for the better. You know, I kind of... The first game characters were so iconic... I just wish they kind of left it alone and remade the Space Harrier for the Genesis, even though they did it on the Master System. I mean, they did it without Run, so why not this too? Um, so, I don't know. I, every time I play this, I keep wishing it was the first Space Harrier. Space Invaders 91. So, um, sort of modern take of Space Invaders, right? So, they're still coming down from the ground, but now you've got different power-ups, you've got bombs, they come in different formations. Um, so for people who really like Space Invaders, you know, here's another way to play it, a modernized version of it. Uh, so this is, um, this is a, a repro, right, Space Turtle Ship, right, so, um, it's an odd game. I think this is a, it was a Korean-only release. And your ship is like a flying ship with like, you know, paddles, people like rowing paddles. Um, it's just, yeah, you know, I got it because I felt like I should have it because it, was, it would add to the collection, but it's not very good. Steel Empire. This was a great game. This is a steel punk, steampunk game uh, in terms of, you know, design. And you can pilot a, a biplane or a blimp. And... Uh, get power-ups and you know everything that is all the designs here are very very it's very stylized and it's just a lot of fun to see what the what the next stage holds um it's not too hard right you could sit down and beat it in like 40 minutes um if you're a practiced shooter up player but it, it's still fun it's it's there's cutscenes that show like old film grain and like like it's a movie as you play through it it's pretty cool So Subterranea is uh, kind of a physics-based shooter. Your your button controls the jets that propel you, and if you can, if you hold them too long, you'll gain too much speed, and you'll like crash into walls. Right. The whole point is you're like flying within a cavern, within like an underground mine, and you're having to like rescue people, the miners, and it's some really tight quarters, and. Um, I'm just always crashing into the place. And of course you have a life bar, but when you crash, your life bar goes down as well as from being shot. It's, it's too hard for me. I don't really care for it. Uh, the strike series games are not technically, you know, shooters because they are, but they aren't. They're more like shooters that involve some kind of strategy. Um, you know, you got to monitor your ammo levels, your your armor levels, how much you get hit, your fuel levels. Um, so they're more methodical. You really have to stop and think and plan out your route, what you're doing. You can't just go in blunts, guns blazing. So, you know, it's neat in that regard. And these are the three on the Genesis. The series continued on PlayStation. They released some more, much more games on it. But, uh, you know, I guess since they kind of qualified, I put them here. Super Fantasy Zone. This is the... Uh, uh, European Mega Drive release. Um, it's, well, Fantasy Zone, but Super. So, I, you know, I don't know if it's... It's not the same game. It's not like the same Fantasy Zone. So I guess it's the sequel. Um, you know, you, you buy, collect coins, go to the shop, buy power-ups. The thing I never liked about this game, this, or this series, was that the fact once you bought a power-up, then you couldn't buy it again or it got more expensive the second time around, right? Which was kind of annoying. Super Thunder Blade, right? Which was directly inspired from the movie Blue Thunder from the 80s, right? The helicopter style. Uh, this was a great arcade game. Like you sat in, there's a cockpit and there was a yoke and you could fly around in and out in 3D. But it didn't translate as well to home consoles. You know, they released it for the Master System, and that game was very limited. 
And I, you would think that this would be a lot better, but just it's just not. Um, they couldn't really figure it out. Like they, they should have attempted to bring this home. This, this was like a very, very unique type of game that could only be played in a certain way, I think, you know, in the arcade. So, Task Force Harrier EX. This is kind of a run-of-the-mill shooter. It's fun. It's basic. You've got uh, some voice samples in here that are pretty clean and pretty clear, so that's impressive. Um, use of color could be better. I feel like some stages, like the stage just washes itself out with the same tones of color. So I don't know. They could have spent more time making it more appealing there. Maybe they're trying to make it too realistic and making it look too much like a valley or too much like a desert or something. I don't know. But uh, it's still fun. Thunder Force 2, which was the start of the Thunder Force series on the Genesis. It's not the first game. The first game was on an obscure Japanese home computer. But um, uh, this one, in the first, in part two, you have alternating between horizontal stages and kind of free roaming overhead stages. In the free roaming overhead stages, you had to destroy fixtures and enemy placements before um, the stage would end. So some people really didn't like it. I didn't mind it. I thought it was different, you know. I But by the time the third one came out, they eliminated those overhead free roaming stages. So now you're just like, now it's all horizontal stages, which is fine because the stages are all good. And this game here, you know, this and Musha kind of vie for number one for me. The music, the graphics, everybody. But if you're watching this, you probably have seen this picture before of the Gorgon stage, the fiery stage with the backgrounds of swirling flames. Um, the music on here is just as good as, it's, as any other soundtrack on the Genesis. Uh, the gameplay is smooth. Your weapons, you can cycle between all your power-ups. Um, it's, and it's, it's, an, it's actually not too hard either. I mean, you could, you earn one-ups fairly easily, so you can kind of use those to help, you know, grind your way through the game. So I can't say enough about this. This is just, you know, and also this was one of the first shooters I ever had on the Genesis. So there's a very strong nostalgic factor there. Thunder Force 4, known as Lightning Force, but the Mega Drive version is much more appealing because it's actually called Thunder Force 4 and the cover art's so much better. Again, another, another instance of Sega shooting themselves in the foot. Why, why would you change, why would you publish this and you know instead of this in the u.s you know i guess they don't like money so thunder force 4 ups the ante as far as action difficulty um the power-ups even newer and and crazier power-ups um the end but the bosses are a lot harder in this game in my opinion so just so much going on. This, a lot of the stages, the screens will will scroll up and down so much. So there, at any given point, you're missing a lot of the screens. So there's different ways to play each stage as you go through them. Um, halfway through the game, your ship gets equipped with uh, the the beam sword or whatever it's called, the power sword, and uh, it's short range. But like if you activate it when you're in right in front of a, a boss, it will basically like take them down because it's that powerful. The, you know, the risk reward being that you're vulnerable because you're so close. Uh, Thunderbolt 2. This is a repro because this is an unreleased game. Um, it's okay. You know, just it's just a game to get because I needed a collection. Troubleshooter. So, the first in the Battle Mania series. So, this game is a lot of fun. It's just like the second one, you know, this is obviously more rudimentary than the second one. There's a little fewer, there's less, it's not as um, action-packed and not as zany, but it's still a good game. It's still a lot of fun. Um, Truxton, right? Toll Plan, very, very difficult game. Uh, man, I mean, at some point, the enemy's patterns... Their bullets shoot fast, and that's the kind of difficult part about this game. It's like a lot of times you can spend more time thinking and, and planning your route where you're going to dodge, but when the enemies shoot out bullets this fast, you just kind of have to, 
I don't know, know that they're know they're coming and know what the bullet pattern is going to be like to avoid them after a while. Um, I, in my opinion, it takes too long to power up in this game. Uh, the power ups are cool, right? You got like the the lightning, the magnetic lightning. You've got uh, the spread shot, um, the truxton laser, but you have to collect these P icons, and then like every fourth one grants you a power up and weapon ability. So, you know, and and of course. It's so easy to die. When you die, you're reset as far as your power-up pickups. Twin Cobra, another total plan game. So this game uh, is... I It's fun, but it's hard. You know, it's um, just... It was also another total plan game. I don't know. The difficulty just seems like it's not tuned right. Um because it gets too hard too early in my opinion doesn't the learning curve is not is not smooth but uh you know for if you really want to grind away at this you could get good twinkle tail is a kind of a, it falls under the shoot mode category but it's it's another character land-based game so your avatar is running around kind of like a running gun uh this little girl she could pick up these these uh different type weapon types these different magic types and um the bosses are fun to play you know it's it's a pretty it's just a fun game to, to look at fun game to play um pretty rare on deadline another walking based shooter like a like a walking gun i guess um mega drive release only so this game is fun i i just there's one aspect of it i don't like and that's when the power up treasure chests that you shoot um once you open them they cycle through and one of the options that it cycles through will actually like like be a bad thing it'll be like lower your speed or lower your firepower or whatever and that's just annoying i don't know why they would do that vapor trail so this was made by data east and this is this is a fun game where uh you're ship flies around and you, and your power up kind of like arrow flash is that you turn into the spinning bolt of energy flying around once your power up is, is engaged and uh you can inflict a lot of damage right on bosses and enemies um pretty straightforward though other than that right some some good music in this game another renovation game veritex another mega drive only release um, straightforward, another straightforward horizontal, or for, sorry, vertical shooter, and, you know, underlooked, underrated, right? So the music, you know, it's hit or miss. Some stages are okay. Some, some it's not good. Um, but, uh, yeah. Viewpoint is, uh, a port of the Neo Geo arcade, the isometric, you know, isometric shooters, I'm not crazy about. I feel like they can shooters can be difficult enough, let alone having to figure out, you know, what angle a projectile is going to line up with. You know, will is it on path to hit you? Is it not? I, I just, I feel like the isometric thing is a needless level of difficulty that's added. I don't see the point in it. Whip Rush. So this is another early shooter, horizontal. Um, you know, it's straightforward. The designs are just kind of your basic early 90s sci-fi, late 80s sci-fi. Um, this one plays in a lot of ways like Aeroflash, but, um, a little bit more, I don't know if it's more serious or, you know, maybe a little harder than Aeroflash is, but it's, it's a fun game. It's still worth playing, right? It, there's not too many frills with this one. It's very, more so straightforward. Uh, XDR, Mega Drive. Um, I haven't played this one that much. Um, I should really sit down and play it a little bit more, but uh, don't have too much to say about it. It's more of a, I got it and kind of a got buried under a bunch of new releases. So maybe I'll sit down and play that one later. Xenon, uh, Mega Blast. So this is a... Uh, Mega Drive, a European Mega Drive release, and 
this is just kind of a, a weird, I don't know, the graphics don't, don't inspire. It's some odd, I don't know, it's just an okay game. I feel like it's a little too slow. It's kind of choppy moving. Um, and that, that kills any fun in playability is when the game is choppy. So I don't know if there was a Xenon 1, but uh, I don't know if it would be any better. And last of the cartridge Genesis games, Zero Wing. All right, so this is the Japanese release, the Mega Drive release. Uh, it's not the English, the the, um, the PAL release, which with the, the meme statement, all your base belong to us, all right? So, you know, one thing about these these games is I love, I love the little icons here. You know, the, the genre icons, I wish... I wish they had a uniform way of displaying those on the Genesis games. So Zero Wing is a great game. You've got like these two little satellite orb things and they kind of, you pick their shooter, their fire powder pattern changes based on what power-ups you pick up. Um, you can you can suction enemies towards you and then throw them, use them as shield or, or throw them at your enemies. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I think this was also released in the newer uh, Toa Plan. I think I don't know if they translated this version. For, yeah, they must have because they had the English already. Yeah, so, so, but I didn't need that one because I already had this. So, all right. Well, that is my sub collection of Genesis shooters. So this is another long one. Sorry about that. Thanks for watching.